Dave, Coaptives Therapeutics is a company we're all watching on the NASDAQ. Very tightly held, only 36 million shares outstanding. You were discussing the universality of your particular treatment and technology. Let's start there. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it's really one of our mantras, our mottos, our philosophy as a company is the universalization of cell therapy. And what, what I mean by that, Tracy, is, you know, cell therapy, albeit I would consider it still in its infancy as compared to other medical sciences, um, is, is extremely expensive um, for, you know, the average person. Uh, you know, right now it's cell therapy. What, what has been working in patients has been autologous cell therapy. And autologous cell therapy means that you're utilizing the patient's own cells. And that's a very expensive thing to do. And all it's been a big push in cell therapy over the last four to five years to move that to allogeneic, which is utilizing cells created off the shelf and put into a patient's body. And you can do that in a much more um, cost-effective way if you can get it to work. The problem is, is it has not been working and it's been, you know, pretty much dramatic failures over the last so many years in this space. And at Coeptis, we find that what we are working on is not failing. It's it's working. I mean, we've uh, we've we've already shown that we've been able to create cells, not have to match those cells at all to the individual patient. Put those same cells in any patient, and their body is accepting them, and they are going to work. That's a very big area. It's very dramatic. It's very paradigm shifting to be able to accomplish that. And, you know, we are moving to that area. And that will be one of the ways that we can dramatically bring down the future cost in cell therapy and allow it to be more available to the masses. And, of course, you've been putting out news and milestones regularly. Uh, I was particularly impressed by the excellent partnerships you have with some of the top-notch academic institutions, in particular Duke University, and you recently just announced uh, an exclusive license agreement with the University of Pittsburgh. Would you like to share the, share more with our audience, please? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, we we, we, I, we really have assembled an amazing scientific team, first of all, at Coeptus. We have um, our, our chief science and medical officer, Dr. Colleen Delaney, is a pioneer, um, truly, in, in, in the area of utilizing what we would consider the best starting material to develop uh, cells, which is human cord, cord blood, um, and being able to utilize that, create these cells, put them in patients. Our scientific advisory board are some of the top scientists at Karolinska. Karolinska, in case your viewers are not familiar with them, is, is the institute where they name the Nobel Prize in medicine every year. So it's world-renowned, you know, revered by the scientific community on a global scale. So some of those partnerships, the expansion of our partnership with the University of Pittsburgh, uh, one of our, our, our chief sciences is a, science, is a platform technology called SnapCar, which we believe is a next generation version of car type therapy, which is um, really uh, a, a dramatic paradigm shifting type um, technology in that space. And we recently just expanded that. We had use of it for oncology. We recently just expanded it for use in autoimmune diseases such as lupus. There was a landmark um, scientific study that showed that CAR-T therapy could be very effective in curing uh, lupus in patients. And so we're expanding uh, SNAPCAR. And the beauty of SNAPCAR is you could use the same cellular structure to attack not only uh, a cancer, any type of cancer at any point on the cancer, but we could use that same cellular structure to attack things like lupus and things like that as well. So because of that, because we do not have to design a new one for every indication, we could utilize the same one. It becomes much more cost effective and much better for patients. There were numerous that I pulled out two news releases. One in particular was the size of the autoimmune disease industry. I think I read it's going to go from over 7.7 .7 billion approximately in 2024 to 12 points, uh, what was it, 12.64 billion yeah. by 2028. What's the reason for this? And how will COEP just step in to deal with, you know, this rising challenge? Well, I mean, I, I think some of the reason is it, it's getting much more attention. So there's a, there's a lot more being pushed towards that to try to help, you know, solve those issues. They're very debilitating illnesses for, for, for the patients. Um, and Coeptis is looking to, 
utilize our current technologies to fight against them. I mean, some of it, what, what, you know, our, our um, cell generation platform, we can utilize off the shelf uh, cells, immune system effector cells to combat different types of areas in autoimmune. And our, 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 our snap car uh, is going to have uh, great effects in that area, we believe as well. You also mentioned that, you know, you have an ongoing commitment to unmet needs. I would love for you to explain to us what you perceive those to be and how you're going to step into that role with Coeptus. I mean, there's obviously immense unmet needs in the medical area. And whether it be, whether you consider an unmet need, the unavailability of a certain technology due to a, a patient's economic status, whether you consider it to be a small type disease that is not getting attention because there's not enough patients in there. Uh, I think Coeptis's technologies can be utilized to assist in all those areas, which could dramatically help patients and, and their health issues. Now you have been uh, hitting rapid fire milestones since I was first introduced to your company about seven months ago. What should we as shareholders anticipate in the upcoming quarter or two? Yeah, great. Thanks, Tracy. The, um, um, certainly the results of our hospitalized COVID trial. And the, you know, when, when investors hear hospitalized COVID, they may look at that and say, well, COVID's old news. Well, for one, it's not. And for two, this was, this was really the ability to show that we could use these cells that are purely off the shelf, unmatched to a patient's body, put them in a patient that has a high viral load, like hospitalized COVID. And this was during when hospitalized COVID was killing people. Um, and the body accepted, and we have been able to show that, which is which is big. I mean that that that, that that's an, a that's a a great milestone to achieve there. But it'll be further results in that. It'll be the closing um, of final enrollment <clears throat> of our AML MDS trial, which we're doing with Duke. Uh, we have two more patients to enroll there, so I would I I, I think we'll see the uh, closing of that shortly. We'll see results from that, and then we'll see our results as we're moving. Um, snap car and gear towards the allogeneic setting as we move that into the clinic sometime next year. And I think there's a lot of other um, um, good opportunities that will be coming in the next so many months um, that will show how Coeptus is really looking to uh, basically expand its um, its its valuation for investors, because that's got to be one of our key mantras there too as well. Well, I'll tell you, this is one of my absolute favorite companies that I'm watching. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you, Dave, for the update on Coeptis and for everybody out there interested in learning more, which I do recommend you get in there and learn more about this because this is, to me, an incredibly exciting sector. Uh, please go to their website. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Tracy.